Oh, and just for those who are curious, uh, this recorded like 28 minutes of straight A-roll for YouTube in 8K24, and no problems. Take that, Canon R5. Well, it certainly has been quite some time since I've done any sort of really anything involving a video with a smartphone. Heck, I'm still using my two-year-old iPhone XS Max. But for whatever reason, when the abundance of Note 20 Ultra videos came out last week, it really got me a little intrigued. What I'm trying to focus on for this video is how good is the Note 20 Ultra's camera for video. You see, phones have gotten to the point where they cost just as much as DSLR cameras. I mean, this specific phone costs the same exact amount as my Blackmagic Pocket 4K. Now, of course, they're completely different uses, but a lot of times people only have the budget for kind of one or the other. Do you want the latest flagship phone or do you want a nicer camera to make videos with? And so when I saw, you know, usual gimmicky headliners like 8K and 108 megapixel wide camera, I was curious and I was like, hmm, okay, well, what if someone wanted to buy the latest smartphone out for Android, a great phone? Uh, could they also use this for content creation and borderline fool people into thinking that they're not filming with a phone, but filming on an actual camera. And just in case you're curious, yes, even this framing right here is being filmed on the Note 20 Ultra. Uh, so this will be a good test whether or not, uh, one, it can record for 20 or 30 minutes at a time without stopping or overheating. It's almost a little scary because I can't even see if it's recording. And of course, uh, if you haven't noticed, this video is uploaded in 8K. Uh, so if your computer can handle it or you're one of the few people who have an 8K monitor, make sure you hit that little quality button and check this out in 8K. So let's dive right into it. Now, what makes a image look like something from the movies or a really good camera? Well, of course you can throw in resolution in there, but I think uh, cinematographers would much more agree that things like dynamic range, bit rate, color depth, uh, basically the more information you can have, the better. So yes, this is shot in 8K, and it's a pretty good 8K, I'll be honest. When I first looked at the footage on my computer, I was pleasantly surprised in a lot of the different clips, like these few, uh, where I was generally, if I just saw these and I was told that these are from the latest whatever, uh, DSLR mirrorless camera, uh, yeah, I would totally believe it. It's a high enough bitrate and has enough detail where it's not like those really cheap off-brand GoPros that are technically 4K resolution, but the data and bitrate and it has all sorts of artifacting and it just looks plain terrible. When shot in proper scenarios, the resolution and the sharpness of this look great. It doesn't look over sharpened, doesn't have a ton of crazy artifacting, it definitely has uh, that kind of digital phone lens flare uh, if you're shooting in some crazy scenarios. Now in terms of dynamic range, I'm also very impressed, both inside and outside. The outside, of course, phones have gotten to the point where the HDR looks definitely like hyper-realism, so I like that style, so I didn't mind it. While I was outside grabbing some of these test shots, I actually decided to do something a little experimental and I think it really worked out and was kind of key to a lot of this footage looking as good as it did. So shooting with the Ultra is actually going pretty well. Uh, you can see on the back here, uh, I didn't want really gross looking shutter speed or anything or just kind of out of place. I still wanted to keep that same as close to the, you know, I'm shooting in 8K 24. So I wanted as close to that 150th uh, shutter speed and so by taking this like Mavic Pro 1 uh, ND filters I had to stack a 16 and a 8 uh, ND and it's actually going pretty well when I'm shooting right into the clouds if I don't want them to clip I still have to go to like a 90th or a hundredth um, just because it's a super uh, sunny day today. Now, while I definitely could have and should have taken a little bit more time to make sure the filter was taped down a little bit better so that there wasn't any light leaks, uh, some of which you may have seen, because there was a little bit of empty space in between 
the glass lens of the phone and the kind of seal of the filter. But for those quick samples and tests, uh, it worked out for the majority of the shots. Now, the reason that's so important is it's kind of like on a drone. Uh, if you've ever flown a drone, when you throw it up, again, it's 4K and so you're like, sweet, oh no, it's sunny. So I have to put out one 500th or one 1,000th of a second shutter speed. And when you watch it back, even though you're at 24P, um, it has that like hyper sharp, just very, very harsh digital look. And a lot of the test shots that I shot just walking around, hand holding the Note 20, um, it was the same kind of deal where I was like, okay, that's definitely filmed on a phone. But uh, stacking the ND16 and 8 on top of each other, and that allowed me to stay at 1 50th of a shutter, which is twice the amount of the frame rate I was shooting, which is the rule you're generally supposed to follow uh, on any camera. And so that gave it a realistic motion blur, and it kept it, it's, again, still sharp, but a little bit more softer and a little bit more cinematic feeling. Now, all the shots that I'm doing here is in the pro mode. So I'm taking control of nearly everything. Um, the only thing that I kept on some of the times was the autofocus. Right now it's on and it's kind of a hit or miss, just like any other phone. Uh, phones are very sensitive to being in focus because again, the average consumer is gonna care more about something looking in focus rather than like a very smooth rack to focus uh, like a first AD would do. You can go into manual focus, but I was shooting this on a gimbal. And so that was just really hard to do. Uh, you'd almost need like the Filmic Pros app kit or whatever, where you can like control from a secondary device. And that leads me to kind of my first disappointment was the fact that the pro mode still didn't have any sort of like log or flatter color shooting profiles. Now in 8K, you don't have control over any of these settings. If you do go down to the full HD or I believe the 4K, you can go in and change the contrast, saturation, exposure, and kind of make those more fine adjustments. So you could, I guess, make your own kind of version of log by just lowering the contrast and saturation a bit. So if you were to buy this phone, you definitely wanna make sure you have the style of realism as everything is going to be nice and saturated. It doesn't look overly saturated, which is nice. I can definitely go in and make some minor tweaks, but you're definitely not going to be able to take something like a full flat raw image and transform it into this crazy stylized look without having any sort of um, banding, artifacting, or just really messy colors. So you definitely wanna keep the color correction and color grading very light. Now there's a saying I always like to use uh, while talking about cameras, and that is an iPhone in Roger Deakins' hands is way more powerful than an Ari in mine. And what I mean by that is it is about the shooter at the end of the day. With any camera, whether it's the Note 20 Ultra, Blackmagic, RED, Ari, you have to know the limitations and the scenarios in which your camera is going to um, excel and where it's going to fall short. And so a lot of these shots, I was able to get really good looking ones because I knew the limitations of this. And using tools in pro mode like the histogram, which I used for all of the shots because I knew I didn't have the color data to fix things in post, and so I needed to get it as close and as correct in camera as possible. I also did use the DJI Osmo Mobile on this because a gimbal to get most of these shots was uh, absolutely necessary because at 8K, you only have 24 FPS. I could have gone down to 4K to get 60. And of course, they are cool, sl super slow-mo in super low quality settings. But a lot of people shoot handheld and shoot at 60 or 120, so that way they can slow it down, takes out a lot of that shake. But here, if you wanna go 8K, you only have 24. Um, and so when I was doing anything handheld, unless that's the specific look you're going for, uh, in this case, I was going for everything to be relatively smooth. Now here's a great example when comparing side by side the Note 20 Ultra to the iPhone. Now you can clearly tell that the Note 20 Ultras looks way more cinematic. And again, there's no LUTs, there's no heavy color grading or anything like that on either of these clips. Now, why does it look like that? It's certainly not because the iPhone is 4K and the Samsung is 8K. And it's not really even because the iPhone is on 60 FPS, just 
forgot that's what it was on when I was shooting this clip. Cause on the Samsung, I was in pro mode and I was in control of the exposure. And so I was allowed to make it the exact look that I want. And so what I did is I pay attention to getting the histogram to have the majority of the image be as close to the middle as possible. If you look at your scopes, when you're shooting on any regular camera, whether it's a phone or just like a DSLR set to auto, what it's going to do is it's going to look for the most contrasty image possible. So it's gonna put your shadows as close to the bottom as possible and your highlights as close to the top as possible and obviously everything in between. That's what creates contrast and generally a pretty easy, pleasing image for the average person to look at. But films are actually a lot more towards the middle, both in the shadows and the highlights. Now this ranges for every different movie, every different style, but in general, you're not pushing it all the way to the edge. And that is actually the secret sauce to the cinematic look. It's not resolution, and that's why a lot of people care more about dynamic range, because you have a lot more control over that. And so the Samsung in this clip looks flatter and that's what's giving it that extra look. Now you may like one or the other and that's totally fine. That's why this is all subjective, but it's definitely good to know. And that's why going back to the original question, can you use the Note 20 Ultra as your only and main camera? Absolutely. If you get this camera, learn its limitations, learn where it excels, because it definitely excels in a lot of scenarios that a lot of other smartphones do not. Now, if you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button because that lets me know that you actually really enjoyed the style of this video and that you want me to make uh, more videos focused on whether or not you can use them as your dedicated camera. Also, let me know down in the comments which phone you think I should test out next. And until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video.